let's see how we do. Huh. Hello everybody, this is Philip. Back again at you, the casual pilot. Thanks for tuning in. Well, I'm on the way to the flying field today, and this time I actually have somebody to film me. Point the camera at you. That's Hi. my cameraman for the day. It's a young man that goes to my church, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello. And uh, he has he has aspirations to become a video editor and video production person. Don't ask me why he'd want to go down that path, but if, if we don't have more people doing it, then hey, it'll die off as an art. So. I'll encourage anybody that wants to do it if they're crazy enough. So he wants to learn to run the camera a little bit more and I'm setting him up in some software and gonna let him try and make a version of my vlog too. So maybe you can compare it and compliment him and say whether he did good or not. Anyway, my channel's called The Casual Pilot and something I always forget to do, silly me. If you like what we're doing and you think it's fun and you wanna see my videos right down there, I know I'm, I'm driving, don't worry, my eyes are down there, right down there is a subscribe button. Click on that um, and get some subscribers. My numbers are really low not right now. Someday I'd like to be big enough that YouTube would pay me, but I need a thousand subscribers and I think I'm up to 45. So let's see if we can get that number up. And if you really like it, on the subscribe button there's a little bell. As everybody says that are vloggers, ring that bell right down there and then you'll get an email notification every time I post a new video. So you can be one of the first people to uh, watch my video, feel free to leave me comments, suggestions. Uh, you can tell me I suck if you want to, but uh, I might delete you. Not if it's really bad and inappropriate, I will delete you. But uh, post some comments if you think you like what you, what you see. You uh, want some other ideas of maybe things I could do. I have some ideas. I just need somebody to film them. We are here. We're at the flying field. My pilot is here too. This is Mocha. She has wings, see, she's a pilot. So she comes with me flying everywhere. She's my mascot and probably a better pilot than me. So anyway, she's joining us today. She's gonna sit here on the table and supervise. I'm gonna go get my planes out and set them up, enjoy the fun. All right, so we're gonna fly the Bearcat first, the F-8F Bearcat, and there's a couple things about this I wanna show you I've really never shown people. It's a scale plane. I've actually put some dirt paint on by the guns to make it look like they've been fired. It's not super fancy or anything, 50 cent paint at Walmart. But uh, one thing that I've done that kind of takes away from the scale but makes it a lot easier to fly, is right here on the edge of the wings, I put some silver covering and because it's blue, when I fly it up in a blue sky, it just turn, it get, turns into a black spot. You can't see it. But when I turn, and you may see it on some of the video because it's sunny out today, those wingtips in silver look like lights. They reflect the light, and it really helps me keep my bearings and know exactly where the plane is at. Flying this one on a 4-cell, 4 4,000 battery, it's like a brick. This thing's massive. Uh, it'll fly probably, I usually fly about 5 minutes and bring it down. I could probably squeeze six or seven minutes out of it, but when you start pushing batteries that hard, you weaken the batteries and you uh, may ruin a battery, which they ain't real cheap. They're not bad, but they're not dirt cheap. So I like to protect my investment. So I'll probably fly five to six minutes total. Today, what I'm gonna try and do is film a lot of takeoffs and landings and kind of walk you through the complexity of flying a Warbird and getting the landings and takeoffs right because there's some tricks to it and I'm not saying I'm an expert but I practiced a lot this year and I've had some really good success so you'll see some probably some good takeoffs and landings and you just might see a bad takeoff or landing I'm not making any promises all right takeoffs on this plane are fairly simple nothing crazy the one thing you have to watch for is if you get the tail up too high in the process it will strike the prop I've done that a number of times. That's why there's no paint on the tip of my props. One thing I like to do that a lot of other people don't do when you see RC flyers, they like to just gun it and go. I try and make my takeoffs look scale because to me the joy of flying a scale plane is making it look like it's actually the real plane on the runway. 
other than the bumps, I try and make my takeoff runs really long. Will I do it? I don't know. It depends. Sometimes the plane will go off to the side because there's torque from the engine that pulls it sideways and you have to correct for that while you're taking off. So we will see what happens and hopefully I'll get a nice scale takeoff and Eric will be able to cover it well. Taking off. Hopefully. You ready? You ready? Yep. Ooh. That's how not to do it. Rolling? Yep. Much more than I like. Alright, I'm going to pass by and pull the landing gear up so you can see it. You see the foil? Listen, here comes the landing gear. Okay, this next pass by, I'm going to drop the landing gear. You should be able to see them come down. I'm going to make a turn. My landing gear doors aren't pop dropping up today like they're supposed to, but I'm going to come down over the runway, and you'll see me drop the landing gear. I like to be able to see them down so I can confirm I'm ready to land. All right, so now I'm going to bring a little more altitude. Now, there's a spot out there I'm lining up with the trees. And I'm going to start bringing in. I'm running about half throttle with a warbird. You don't want to coast it in. You can see the flaps down. You bring it in slow. You get it close to the runway. And then once it hits, you drop it. And you roll out. And then you bring the flaps up. To the All right, I'm going to... Yep. That wasn't a great takeoff. I came off way faster than I wanted to, but the grass was a little scary. I've got the gear up already. Okay, follow me this time, Eric. I'm going to do what they call a victory roll, which is always cool looking in a war bay. There we go. Here we are, all nice and free. Okay, let's speed up a little drop the flaps. That beeping sound is my timer telling me my time's about up. So it's probably good to be landing here. Although I can do one more flight if I want. Okay, I'm lining up with the tree line the proper way. Find the runway. Keep the power up. All right, before we fly, we're going to check everything. Right ailerons, elevator, left, right. Everything's working the right direction. My flaps, I had to put them on a new switch because my radio fell last night, the other day, and uh, broke one of my switches, so I have to set my flaps to a new switch. I love my radio, but the switches are very flimsy. So, check my rates. Those are high rates, low rates. Everything seems good. All right, we're going to turn off the kill switch. Strap in, not that I need it, it just helps me rest, and let's go flying. Okay, this plane when we take off wants to pull hard left because of the torque from the prop. Um, it's just really ugly. If I don't fight it, it will come right at us. So when I take off of this, I put a little down elevator to push the tail down so it keeps pressure on it, and then I'm basically giving it full right rudder. To keep it going straight until we're up and running. Once the tail comes up, then I can drop all of that and I can control it as it rolls on the front two wheels. So let's see if we can do it without having a major disaster. This one can be a handful to take off. Let's see how it is. Pull right rudder, see that? I'm going straight now. I can let off the rudder a little bit and off the go. Just going to drop the gear. Okay, I see them both down. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to drop my flap. So that'll let me slow down a little bit more. And let's turn in. Line up with the trees. Look, I'm a little too far out. There we go. Okay, let's come in and see. Oh, the wind came right back down the runway, so this should be okay. Again, about half throttle. 
going long. Yep, I'm gonna go around like that. Pull the flaps up. I'm gonna leave the wheels down. If you get in trouble, the best thing to do is go around and don't press your luck. Because it very seldom works right. So we're alone today, so I'm not having to fly a regular pattern. I can fly right down the runway. If there were other people out here, we'd have to be a little more careful where we're flying. So okay, let's get out there. We're gonna turn. Okay, get lined up, drop the flaps. Ooh, bouncy out there. Whoa. Missed that one up too. I did not do good there. See, I don't always do perfect landings, so. Go back around, we're gonna try one more time. Gonna drop the flaps now. For my turn, and let's try this again. Okay, I'm getting lined up, about half throttle. That was a good one. That was some. Them was some bad landings. If you can see the well, the windsock here is straight down the field. The windsock over here is crosswind, so we'll see what we get. That's probably why my landing's got a little squirrely. So judging by the cotton wood balls that are flying, it's a little bit across the runway. So let's try this. We're gonna give it full right when we're taking off again. That was very sketchy. Not how you do it. So don't take that takeoff and say that's how you take off the orbit. Flaps down. We're at the end of this battery anyway. Keep some speed up so you don't stall. Because Warbird stalls are ugly. Can't go around. Perfect this time. So far, so much better. Whoa, that was terrible. Yeah, I'm not doing very good with those first things. Going less flaps this time. Full flaps again, see how we do. There we go, baby. Look at that. That's how you do it. That's the takeoff I wanted.
don't lose too much speed in that turn there, you will spin in like a drill bit. Don't ask me why I know that. See, I got the tail up too high on that one and scraped my prop. Just like I said, you gotta be careful with. Sketchy. Yes, that was sketchy. Speed up. Turn in for final. Get lined up with the tree and pretty close. Let's see how we do. Huh. <laughs> now come out here, let's look at it. Okay, first I'm going to disconnect my battery and then I'll explain what happened, best I can tell. Okay, let's get that unplugged so we don't have a hazard of the plane dividing. Let's turn the radio off. Okay. Here's what my theory is on this. See these landing gear? They're really long. And every time you hit the bumps on that runway, they're doing this. So these are already weak points. You can see where I've already cracked a little bit on that one there. And I believe I had done it on this one too. The good part is this is a very clean break. And all I need is a little bit of Gorilla Glue. And boom, it'll be ready to fly again. But what else has caused that is one, the glue that they use at the factory, from what I understand, let me flip it upside down, that glues in down here in the pocket, let me flip it around for you. What happens is the glue isn't really, really strong, and it's almost like a silicone glue. So a lot of times these planes with their landing gear like this, one of the first things to break on the first rough landing is the thing will just pop off like that, Gorilla glue it back in or epoxy it back in and it never happens again. I've had that happen on a couple of my warbirds So this does not surprise me does not tick me off. I'm not upset about it Literally within an hour of getting home. I could have this ready to fly again. It's that simple to fix We're gonna have a little bit of a mess there with our tape that covers up the servo wire But it'll go right down in there and I'll paint that blue with some paint and you'll barely be able to tell that happened but it's very simple and un Fortunately, with these kind of planes, because this is foam, every landing when your gear is doing this, you're stressing that foam and it's a weak joint there. So it's just a matter of time on all of these. And once I give it some glue, it will probably be stronger than when it came from the factory. So very simple fix, not a big deal. I'm not upset. It was kind of epic, actually. I'm glad I got it on tape because that was cool. So anyway, I think that will wrap our day up. There's a plane flying over, sorry. My shirt says I don't, yeah, I always look at planes. I have to look at the plane. <laughs> anyway, I do have one more battery for the Corsair. I may run that, I think we'll run that. But anyway, this plane is done for the day. So we had one battery, we didn't get to fly, but that's okay. And really for this big Bearcat, that is the first bad experience I've had with it as far as anything really, really breaking. So it's been a great plane. I probably have 25 flights on it already before anything like this happens. So I'm happy with it and that'll be fixed in no time. Chill out, boy. Chill out.